This was brought to you by The Storyteller on YouTube and Facebook. The Lurking Fear by H.P. Lovecraft 4. The Horror in the Eyes There can be nothing normal in the mind of one who, knowing what, what I knew of the horrors of Tempest Mountain, would seek alone for the fear that lurked there, that at least two of the fear's embodiments were destroyed, formed by a slight guarantee of mental and physical safety. In this occurring of multiform diabolism, yet I continued my quest with even greater zeal as events Revelations became more monstrous. When, two days after my frightful crawl through that crypt of the eyes and claw, I learned that a thing had malignly hovered twenty miles away at the same instant the eyes were glaring at me. Experience virtual convulsions fright. But that fright was so mixed with wonder and a luring grotesqueness that it was almost a pleasant sensation. Sometimes, in the throes of a nightmare, when unseen powers whirl one over the roofs of strange dead cities, Toward the grinning chasm of menace. It is a relief and even a delight to shriek wildly and throw oneself voluntarily along with the hideous vertex of dream doom into whatever bottomless gulf may yawn. And so it was with the waking nightmare of Tempest Mountain, the discovery that two monsters had haunted the spot gave me ultimately a mad craving plunge into the very earth of the accursed region, and with bare hands dig out the death that leered from every inch of the poisonous soil. As soon as possible, I visited the grave of Jan Martins and dug vainly where I had dug before. Some extensive cave had obliterated all trace of the underground passage, while the rain had washed so much earth back into the excavation that I could not tell how deep I had dug that other day. I likewise made a difficult trip to the distant hammer where the death creature had been burnt and was little repaid for my trouble. In the ashes of the fatal, fateful cabin I found several bones, but none of the monsters. The squatters said the thing had had only one victim, but in this I judged them inaccurate, since besides the complete skull of a human being, there was another bony fragment which seemed certain to have belonged to a human skull at some time. Though the rapid drop of the monster had been seen, no one could just say just what the creature was like. Those who had glimpsed it called it a simply a devil. Examining the great tree where it had looked, I could discern no distinctive marks. I tried to find some trail into the black forest, 
but of this occasion could not stand the sight of those morbidly large holes or of those vast serpent-like roots which twisted so malevolently before they sank into the earth. My next step was to re-examine with microscopic care the deserted hamlet where death had come most abundantly and where Arthur Monroe had seen something he never lived to describe. Though my vain previous searches had been exceedingly minute, I now had new data to test, for my horrible grave crawl convinced me that at least one of the phases of the monstrosity had been an underground creature. This time, on the 14th of November, my quest concerned itself mostly with the slopes of Cone Mountain and Maple Hill, Hill where they overlook the unfortunate ham, and I gave the particular attention to the loose earth of the landslide region on the latter eminence. The afternoon of my search brought nothing to light, and dust came as I stood on Maple Hill looking down at the hamlet across the valley of the Tempest Mountain. There had been a gorgeous sunset and now the moon came up, nearly full, and shedding a silver flood over the plain. The distant moon mountainside and the curious low mounds that rose here and there, it was a peaceful, Arcadian scene, but knowing what it hid, I hated. I hated the mocking moon, the hypocritical flame, the festering mountain, and those sinister mounds. Everything seemed to be tainted with a loathsome contagion and inspired by a noxious alliance with distorted hidden powers. Presently, as I gazed abstract at the moonlight panorama, my eye became attracted to something singular in the nature of arrangement of a certain topographical element. Without having an exact knowledge of geology, I had from the first been interested in the odd mounds and hammocks of the region. I noticed that they were pretty widely distributed around Tempest Mountain, though less numerous on the plain than near the hilltop itself, where prehistoric glaciation had doubtless found feebler opposition to its striking and fantastic cap caprices now in the light of that low moon which cast long weird shadows it struck me forcibly that the various points and lines of the mound system had a peculiar relation to the summit of Tempest Mountain. That summit was undeniably a center from which the lines or rows of points radiated indefinitely and irregularly as if the unwholesome Martin's mansion had thrown visible tentacles of the terror. The idea of such tentacles gave me an unexplained thrill, and I stopped 
do analyze my reason for believing these mounds palatial phenomena. The more I analyze, the less I believe, and against my newly opened mind, there began to be grotesque and horrible analogies based on superficial aspects and upon my experience beneath the earth. Before I knew it, I was uttering frenzied and disjoined words to myself. My God, molehills, the damned place must be honeycombed. How many? That night at the mansion, they took Bennett and Toby first on each side of us. Then I was digging frantically into the mound which had stretched nearest me, digging desperately, shiveringly, shiveringly, but almost jubilantly, diggling, digging, and at least shrieking aloud with some unplaced emotion as I came upon a tunnel or burrow just like the one through which I had crawled on the other demonic night. After that, I recall running spade in hand a hideous run across moonlit mound marked meadows and through diseased precipitous abysses of haunted hillside forest. Leaping, screaming, panting, bounding towards the terrible Marquette's mansion. I recall digging unreasoningly in all parts of the briar choked cellar, digging to find the core and center of the malignant universe of mounds. And then I recall how I laughed when I stumbled on the passageway, the hole at the base of the old chin where the thick weeds grew and cast queer shadows in the light of the lone candle I had happened to have with me. What remained down in that hell hive, lurking and waiting for the thunder to arouse it, I did not know. Dew had been killed, perhaps, that had finished it. But still, there remained that burning determination to reach the innermost secret of the fear which I had once more come to deem definite, material, and organic. My indecis indecisive speculation whether to explore the passage alone and immediately with my pocket light, or to try to assemble a band of squatters for the quest was interrupted after a time by a sudden rush of wind from outside, which blew out the candle and left me in stark blackness. The moon no longer shone through the chinks in apertures above me, and with a sense of fateful alarm I heard the sinister and significant rumble of approaching thunder. The confusion of associated ideas possessed my brain, leading me to grope back towards the farthest corner of the cellar. My eyes, however, never turned away from the horrible opening at the base of the chimney. I began to get glimpses of the crumbling bricks and unhealthy weeds as faint glows of lightning penetrated the woods outside and illuminated the chinks in the upper wall. Every second I was consumed with a mixture of fear and curiosity. 
what would the storm call for? Or was there anything left for it to call? Guided by a lightning flash, I settled myself down behind a dense clump of vegetation through which I could see the opening without being seen. If heaven is merciful, it will someday keep Ephesus from my consciousness, the sight that I saw, and let me live my last years in peace. I cannot sleep at night now and have to take opiates when it thunders. The thing came abruptly and unannounced. A demon rat-like scurrying from pits, remote and unimaginable, a hellish painting and stifled grunting, and then from that opening beneath the chimney it burst a multitudinous and leprous life, a loathsome night spawn, blood of organic corruption more devastatingly hideous than the blackest conjurations of moral madness and morbidity. Seething, stewing, surging, bubbling like serpent's slime, it rolled up and out of that yawning hole, spreading like a septic contagion and streaming from the cellar at every point of egress, streaming out to scatter through the accursed midnight forest and strew fear, madness, and death. God knows how many there were. There must have been thousands. To see the stream of them in that faint, intermittent lightning was shocking. And they had been out enough to be glimpsed as separate organisms. I saw they were dwarfs, deformed, hairy devils, or apes. Monstrous and diabolic characters of the monkey tribe. They were so hideously silent. There was hardly a sequel when one of the largest stranglers turned with the skull of long practice to make a meal of a custom fashion on a weaker companion. Others snapped up what it left and ate with slobbering relish. Then in spite of my days of fright and disgust, my morbid curiosity triumphed, and as the last of the monstrosities oozed up alone from that nether world of unknown nightmare, I drew my automatic pistol and shot it under cover of the thunder, shrieking, slithering, torrential shadows of red vicious madness chasing one another through endless ensanguined corridors of the purple, bulgerous sky, formless phantasms, and kaleidoscopic mutations of a ghoulish remembered scene, forest of monstrous, overnourished oaks with serpent roots twisted and sucking unnameable juices from an earth verminous with millions of cannibal devils, mound-like tentacles groping from the underground nuclei of polypus aversion, insane lightning over malignant ibid walls and demon arcade cadence choked with fungus vegetation.
Heaven is thank for the instinct which led me unconscious to places where men dwell, to the peaceful village that slept under the calm stars of clear skies. I had recovered enough in a week to send to Albany for a gang of men to blow up the Martens mansion and the entire top of Tempest Mountain with dynamite. Stop up all the discoverable mound burrows and destroy certain overnourished trees whose very existence seemed an insult to sanity. I could sleep a little after they had done this, but true rest will never come as long as I remember that nameless secret of the lurking fear. The thing will haunt me, for who can say the extermination is complete and that analogous phenomena do not exist? all over the world. Who can, with my knowledge, think of the Earth's unknown caverns without a nightmare grid of future possibilities? I cannot see a well or a subway entrance without shuddering. Why cannot the doctors give me something to make me sleep or truly calm my brain and get thunders. What I saw in the glow of my flashlight after I shot the unspeakable straggling object was so simple that almost a minute elapsed before I understood and went delirious. The object was nauseous, a filthy whitish gorilla thing sharp yellow fangs and matted fur. It was the ultimate product of mammalian degeneration, the frightful outcome of isolated spawning, multiplication, and cannonball nutrition above and below the ground, the embodiment of all the snarling chaos and grinning fear that lurked behind life. It had looked at me as it died, and its eyes had the same odd quality that marked those other eyes which had stared at me underground in excited, cloudy recollections. When I was blue, the other brown. They were the dissimilar Martin's eyes of the old legends, and I knew in one inundating cataclysm of voiceless horror what had become of the vanished family, the terrible and thunder crazed house of Martin's. This was brought to you by The Storyteller on YouTube and Facebook. Listen to our podcast on any of these platforms. Anchor. Breaker. Overcast. Pocket Casts. Radio Public. Spotify. Support us on Patreon. And check us out on Discord. All the links can be found in the video description below. We thank you for your participation. If you enjoyed please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love feedback.